Hello, and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and a geography buff. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. So each day, I'm going to share one of my favorite deep cuts with you. So let's take a look at today's story. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today in 1520, Portuguese navigator Ferdinand Magellan sailed through the strait located at the southern tip of South America and crossed from the Atlantic Ocean into the Pacific Ocean. So why is that a big deal? Well, with this passage, Magellan became the first European explorer to reach the Pacific Ocean by way of the Atlantic. Let's reverse the beginning of Magellan's journey, though. King Charles of Spain funded the expedition. He wanted to find an alternate route to Indonesia because the current route going south of Africa and through the Indian Ocean was controlled by Portugal under the Treaty of Tordesillas. Magellan left Spain on September 20th, 1519, and sailed west with the goal of finding an alternate route to the Spice Islands of Indonesia, also known as the Molucca. He was the commander of five ships and 270 men, called the Armada de Molucca. He directed his fleet to West Africa, and then across the Atlantic to Brazil. He searched the coast of Brazil for a strait that would take him through from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. In Brazil, he first searched the Rio de la Plata, which is a large estuary at the south of Brazil, but he was unable to find a thoroughfare. He then went south via Patagonia. In March of 1520, Magellan and his men made a winter camp at Port St. Julian. At midnight on Easter, the Spanish captains of the crew attempted a revolt, but Magellan defeated the opposition. He killed one of the captains and left another one in St. Julian, where the fleet set forth again in August. Even before the official revolt, the voyage had been filled with tensions. Magellan was Portuguese, and though he had become a Spanish citizen before the voyage, the Spanish crew resented that their captain wasn't born on Spanish soil. And so, these tensions led to an eventual failed revolt. Magellan found the beginning of the strait in October. The strait, which is now known as the Strait of Magellan, separates Tierra de la Fuego from the continental mainland at the southern tip of South America. Three of Magellan's ships entered the strait. They'd lost two in the previous months of the voyage to shipwreck. It took 38 days to get through the strait, and they finally made it to the other side on November 28th. When they saw the ocean at the end of the strait, Magellan wept with joy. At the time, the ocean they saw was known by the name Sea of the South. It would only come to be known as the Pacific Ocean after their ensuing passage. They thought the journey would take three or four days, but the ocean was much larger than they'd anticipated, and it ended up taking 99 days. But the sea was calm despite its largest. In fact, that's where the name Pacific comes from. The ocean was so calm in comparison to the Atlantic that they called it the Pacific, from the Latin word pacifis, which means tranquil. Once the men reached Guam, they were out of food and were chewing on leather in order to survive. The journey had plagued them with scurvy, intense thirst and sickness from eating biscuits that rats had pooped on. They stopped in Guam for 10 days to rest, and then went on to the Philippine island of Cebu, about 400 miles from the Spice Islands they were trying so desperately to reach. But Magellan never made it there. He met with the chief of Cebu and convinced him to convert to Christianity, but in turn, the chief convinced Magellan to come on a mission to conquer a rival tribe on the nearby island of Muktan. During the battle, Magellan was hit by a poisoned arrow and left to die by his former seamen. The men continued to journey, sans Magellan. Juan Sebastian Elcano took Magellan's place as captain. Two ships of men were left, and they sailed to the Moluccas and found the long-sought-after spices. One of the ships tried to go back through the Pacific but couldn't finish the trip, and the captain was arrested and imprisoned. The other continued west across the Indian Ocean, crossed the Cape of Good Hope, and arrived back in Spain in September 1522, which made it the first ship to sail around the world. Only 18 men survived that trip. Though the journey was so long and arduous that it didn't complete the initial goal of finding an easier way to get to Indonesia from Spain, it did gain incredible historical significance as the first fleet to make it around the globe. 
We have a really awesome guest here today from one of my personal favorite bands. Today's music fact, we are bringing in Jake Lupin from the band Hippocampus, who wrote songs like Way It Goes or Buttercup. I love literally all of their music, so I'm super psyched about this. He's here to talk to you today about playing their biggest home state show. On November 28th, 2015, my band Hippocampus headlined the First Avenue Man Room in Minneapolis, Minnesota. This was a big deal to us because our only goal as a band when we started was to play this venue. And after a couple years of touring, we finally got the chance to headline there. Um, the show lived up to all of our expectations. All of our families and friends were there. And there was just such a great hometown support. It felt like such a great reward, again, for all the hard work we've done. And it felt like we were actually making a difference in, in our own backyard. So yeah, that night will stick with me for, for a long time. And now for our final segment of the day, I'll be going into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a November 28th in my life. On November 28th of 2018, I think I was recording the rest of the Plum Blossom EP, but I'm not sure which song because I don't have a video of it. But my guess is that it was recording I Miss You, which was this kind of like, it was the last song that I added to the EP and it was the only song that didn't have ukulele on it. And I remember being really nervous about that song because... I didn't know if people would like it. And I think that was something that I was really, I've gotten a lot better at. It's just making music that makes me happy. And I Miss You was one of those songs that I was like, I really like this, but I don't know if other people will. And now I am two years after that. And I'm kind of just like, whatever. If nobody likes this, that's fine. But I really enjoy it. And so that should be the most important part um, when you're making music is that making sure you really enjoy it first. So yeah, that was what I was up to on November 28th of 2018. Thank you so much for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can come back tomorrow for more stories from yesteryear. Take care. It's 365 with MXM2. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff. No, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough.